It's a, it's a great honor for me to be the first speaker in this series. And uh, as you've seen from the agenda, I think I will be talking about the sustainable development goals. So these are goals that are coordinated for the world by the United Nations. And uh, in this uh, system, in the UN system, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, is the scorekeeper the, who keeps keep, keeping track of how well the world is doing and all the world's countries are doing towards reaching these sustainable development goals. But before getting into my presentation, and I do have a PowerPoint, uh, I wanted to say a little bit about what we mean by sustainable development and in the United Nations Development Program context, what we mean by sustainable human development, because everything we do, whether it's in Georgia here in this country or in all the many countries in the world where we work, it's based on this philosophy of sustainable human development. Sustainable human development, or first starting with human development, emerged as a concept in the 1990s. And it was a reaction to the idea that you would judge how well a country is doing by how big its income is and how fast its economy is growing. So we recognize this is a good measure of progress. We don't deny that income is important, that people need money, that countries show their capacity by becoming more wealthy. But what people realized in the 1980s and 1990s was that you could have an economy that was growing very, very fast, but then you could have poor and poorer people if you had high rates of inequality. So you'd have a few people with all the wealth at one end, and you'd have a massive number of people who were getting poorer at the other end. And it also was a reflection of the realization that, you know, as we say, money isn't everything and money can't buy love or happiness always. It is important, we recognize. So there was an effort from inside the United Nations Development Program to define something new that measures the richness of life and not just the richness of economies. So this was an idea to focus on people and people's lives and find a different way to measure their well-being. So we recognize that not everybody is destined to be happy and happiness is something outside the scope of any development agency, you know, and people can be wealthy and healthy and uh, have lots of opportunities and still be unhappy. But the idea was to say, okay, let's look at uh, uh, longevity, how long people live, how healthy they are, how many opportunities they have, what opportunity they have to be knowledgeable, to be educated, and then do they have access to the resources they need to, to have a decent standard of living? So all those concepts were put together into this idea of human development. And at that point, UNDP developed something called a human development index, which takes also GDP, so gross uh, domestic product, sort of a reflection of income as one of the indicators, but it also includes how long people live, how healthy they are, how well-educated they are, how many years of schooling they have. So it takes some shorthand. And it comes up with an index, which gave a completely different hierarchy of the world's countries than if you looked at how rich they were, what their income was per person. And then we do this every year. We will come out with a new measure uh, shortly. On December the 15th, we will come out with a new ranking. So right now, as you're probably curious, Georgia ranks number 70th out of 189 countries in the world. So not at the very top, but definitely far from the bottom. Doing, doing quite well in a global context. But this is something that measures more than economic growth and more than economic growth. Then we move ahead a couple decades and we add sustainable, the adjective sustainable to this human development idea. And why is that? Well, sustainability in many people's minds equates to something around green or environmental, environmentally sound. And, but it's more than that, but it's quite closely related to the environment. What it, what it basically says is, you know, your life is not gonna be worth much if you don't have a planet on which to lead that life. So you can have all the money in the world, but if you're living in a sea of garbage and you can't breathe the air and uh, climate change is coming and you have massive floods and droughts and, uh, and uh, disasters all the time, that this isn't really a life worth living. So. It's the idea that you can't sacrifice future generations' uh, right to life for your own uh, livelihood. For you know, so you cannot, you shouldn't go out and cut down the forest to heat your homes if 
the next generation is not going to have another forest uh, uh, to make use of or to enjoy. So this is where we come from as UNDP, sustainable human development uh, for planet, for people. As we have lots of shorthand. And this is what uh, inspires everything we do in Georgia and around the world. So then we come to the sustainable development goals, which is really the focus of what I'd like to share with you in a, in a short PowerPoint. It's in English, but I think the interpreters will be able to take us through it. And uh, this is really meant to be an abbreviated course in the sustainable development goals. So I will just share with you five main things that, that I think everyone in the world should know about the sustainable development goals. And if I were more sophisticated, I would do a poll right now on our Zoom uh, Zoom workshop to see how many of you already are aware of the sustainable development goals. So what, what do we mean? What are the sustainable development goals? Well, this is you know, an agenda for the world. They, there are 17 goals uh, that they were coordinated by the United Nations with the aim of making the world a better place. So with this idea of sustainable human development behind it. These were defined in 2015. So there's 17 goals but they reflected many, many years of negotiation in the United Nations in which all the world's countries participated. And while this was going on, the UN conducted a huge opinion polling work around the world to find out what people found most important in looking at their futures. And really it was very consistent. There were polls done here, there were polls done across Europe, Africa, everywhere. They were done online, they were done on paper. They were done in person, but really it came down to some a few simple things that above all, people put education at the top of the list, then health, and then something that is kind of defined as living in a system where there, your government is accountable to you. So those were the three core values that came out of this uh, this massive public opinion survey. Well, um, After this, uh, this lengthy preparatory purpose, these sustainable development goals were endorsed by every single <inaudible> member <inaudible> state <inaudible> of the United Nations <inaudible> during the uh, General Assembly session in September 2015. So it's important to note that while these were kind of curated by the United Nations, <inaudible> they reflect <inaudible> an agenda uh, adopted by every single country in the world, so including Georgia. And I have to say, Georgia has always been a very enthusiastic participant in all United Nations work. And uh, the SDGs, as we call them, the Sustainable Development Goals, were no exception. So then I think it's helpful. I, you know, this is part of our daily work in the United Nations to know these 17 goals. And I have to say the 17 goals come with an elaborate system to monitor the world's progress, come with 169 targets and 230 indicators. So there is a big system behind each goal to say how we measure progress to get to those goals. But I did want to share with you what those goals are because not everybody is familiar with them. Most people know that we have a very colorful way of representing the sustainable development goals, but they don't always know what they are. So quickly, I will go through them one by one. So goal number one is to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. Goal number two, to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Goal number three is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Goal number four is to ensure inclusive and quality education for lifelong learning. Goal number five is to achieve gender equality and empower women and girls. Goal number six is to ensure water and sanitation for all. Goal number seven is to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, modern energy for all. Goal number eight is to promote inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment, decent work. This is the jobs goal. Number eight is all about employment, but you see it's employment and decent work for all, so no exceptions. Goal number nine is to build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. Goal number 10 is to reduce inequality within and among countries. Goal 11, to make cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. 
Goal number 12, ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Goal number 13, this is all about climate change, uh, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Goal number 14, conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas and marine resources. So this is life underwater. Uh, goal number 15, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification, halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. So this is life on, on earth. Uh, goal number 16, very important goal is to promote just, peaceful and inclusive society. So this is where all these Go aims around having rule of law, ending corruption, uh, ending violence, all of that comes under goal number 16, where we, we use our shorthand and we call it the governance uh, goal. And the last one, goal number seven, 17, is to revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. So this is all about countries sharing the burden of achieving these goals together. And it's a lot to do with finance, but it's also a lot to do with sharing experience and, uh, and working together. So those are the 17 goals. It's a lot of words, um, but I think you see that they all boil down to something that can be conveyed in a very simple symbol. And this is a very, what we like very much, very colorful, very persuasive graphics that were that accompanied the definition of the 17 sustainable development goals. And you see they're in rows. So the top row is all about social goals. The second row is, uh, row is all about economic goals. And the third row is all about environmental goals. So those are the goals. And uh, you know, I, they're, they're very easy to, to learn once you start using them. There are five points I just wanted to, to share with you today about these sustainable development goals that I think can help you understand why the UN is so uh, enthusiastic about them, but also why they, are, they can be uh, complicated for countries and communities and individuals to, to, to work towards. So first of all, these are very, very ambitious goals, as you heard in, uh, when I went through them quickly. You know, this is very big thinking. This is not about you know, uh, reducing poverty by 10% or by 20%. This is about eliminating poverty altogether. And I should have said that this is the timeline for these goals is, is not so far away. They're meant to be achieved by the year 2030. So they, were, they came into force at the beginning of 2016, but there's not a whole lot of time, 15 years to achieve goals like that. And we're already, as you can see, well along the way in, uh, in uh, 2020, almost 2021. But so these are big ambitions and there are lots of formulations as you heard that apply to all people everywhere. So for example, end all forms of discrimination against all women and girls everywhere. This is a goal that every country that is a member state of the United Nations, including Georgia has accepted as a goal for itself to achieve by the year 2030. So if you look around, you can see that um, it's not so clear that progress is being made at the pace that it would need to be, to be made to achieve these really big goals. And I think this is why I think, you know, for, the, for a time when you have time to discuss it, or if, you, if you're interested in thinking about it more, to think about are these sustainable development goals really a practical roadmap for countries to follow and the world to follow? Or is, are these kind of ideals that are meant to motivate people to think big, but they aren't meant to be uh, sort of specific plans. And one example I wanted to share here is uh, under the health goal, which is number three, there is a target, number 3.6, so the sixth target under goal number three, about road safety. So road safety is relevant in a lot of places. It's very relevant, as you know, in Georgia, where there are many road accidents and lots of injuries and fatalities. And in road safety, one of the goals was meant to be achieved in this year. So not by 2030, but by 2020, the goal of cutting in half the number of fatalities and injuries from traffic accidents. And if you look at the numbers for Georgia, you see that Georgia, the number has gone down for a few years, but then it started going up again last year. So you have to say, if there's a target for 2020, that is, it's not just that it's not going to be made, met, it's that the, the, the world is headed in the wrong direction and that there are more road safe, safety deaths than before. Then you have to say, is this a realistic agenda? So the second point I want to make is that these are goals that are meant to apply to every country. Sometimes in the past, 
when uh, the UN and UNDP has been working, there have been goals that were intended for what were called then developing countries. So thinking about Africa, for example, or places where there was no uh, in industry. But this is definitely meant for every single country in the world. And you see my photos here are from Germany. So we think of Germany as a very prosperous country, a model for other countries. But this is an agenda that's meant for every country to undertake. And you see it's particularly important when we look at the, the idea of sustainability, of environmental protection and climate change that it's the most prosperous and most industrialized countries that are contributing the most to climate change. So they need to take the most radical steps to uh, reduce their carbon emissions. The third point uh, I wanted to make is that there is a very important package of ideas captured in goal number 16. In the past, uh, you know, there have been previous goals that the UN has set for the world in past decades and uh, times, but they didn't, always include the idea of how we would get there. And this is the first time that the UN and then all the world's countries have agreed that you need institutions. And that, in, that includes representative in, institutions. It's not, there is, it's not written as democracy, but that is the implication of accountable institutions, of rule of law, of uh, an end to corruption, of uh, an, a reduction in violence and a reduction in conflict. And all of those ideas fall under this goal number 16. So it's very important to have the how and to understand that strong institutions, accountable institutions, uh, representative institutions matter in achieving any of these goals that we're looking at. The fourth point is that women's rights and gender equality are very much key to the sustainable development goals. In the past, you know, so women kind of lost out on the, the global agenda. But in this case, there is a goal number five for gender equality, but also every other goal incorporates the idea of equality between men and women, between boys and girls. Uh, and so it is, some, it is a way to show that uh, all of these goals are indivisible and interrelated, that you can't make progress on one without making progress on the others. But if you do make progress on one, you are helping to make progress on the others. So it is an agenda that needs, you cannot sort of pick out one target and say, we will deal with climate change, but then at the same time say, we can leave gender equality for another time. And this is just a graphic representation of how, if you look at all the different goals, how they are interrelated, that everything is related to everything else. And the fifth point, the, my last point, um, is that this might look like, a lot and look like it's really complicated because as I said, there are 17 goals. Those then uh, cascade down to 169 different targets. And then they have underneath them 230 different indicators. But our point as UNDP um, is that really the message or the ideology, the philosophy behind the sustainable development goals are very, very simple. And they go back to the origins of the United Nations, to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which I recommend as another one. If you don't know the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, I highly recommend it from 1948. And Article One of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights uh, says that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. So basically, the Sustainable Development Goals are a very elaborate way of saying that uh, we all need to be committed to equality and we all need to reach out to help those who are farthest behind catch up with the rest of everyone. And that's not just in terms of income, but it's for example, in terms of opportunities. So for example, persons with disabilities need to be able to enjoy the same opportunities as everyone else in society. And we have a very simple way of, of uh, of expressing that, which is the slogan, leave no one behind. And I think if you take one thing away from this presentation today, that would be that the sustainable development goals are all about leaving no one behind. And that can be defined in many different ways in different contexts. But here in Georgia, we see persons with disabilities, people who live in remote and rural regions, um, minorities of all kinds, uh, the poor. There are lots of different ways to define it, but our uh, sort of what mobilizes us going forward is the idea of leaving no one behind. So then you might ask, you know, how is Georgia doing with the sustainable development goals? And Georgia, as I said, has been a very enthusiastic proponent of the idea. 
and undertook very early efforts to take this global uh, system and to nationalize it. So to take all the goals and targets and say what is relevant for us here in the Georgian context. So Georgia has adopted 93 targets and 200 indicators. And these are all available online. So I've put here the reference and we can share this presentation with you if it's of interest. So if you just go to sdg.gov.ge, uh, you will see both the global targets, but then the national targets broken down um, by goal and by, by target, and also a progress report. So there is an online tracker meant to see how well Georgia is doing. And you'll see that there is, progress in some areas and, pro and, uh, and not a lot of progress in some others. But you might ask, okay, if I have the sustainable development goals and they're very ambitious targets, you know, who will come and police me if I don't make progress as a country? And the, po the point is that this is very much a voluntary framework. So there's some things in the United Nations system and as you well know in the EU system and in Europe where you have a convention and the convention has the force of law. So Georgia is a signatory to many, many global conventions, conventions on the rights of persons with disabilities, on equal rights for, for all, on anti-discrimination. And those have the force of international law. So they, Georgia accepts them as a legal framework. Here, this is a voluntary approach, but how does the world then keep track of how well people are doing? Well, all of the countries that signed on to the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015, committed to present their results periodically to the United Nations, to the entire membership of the UN. And Georgia did this very recently this year in the summer uh, to a high level session. So there is a voluntary national review report that you can also find online. You can see it's a, a big document, but these contain all the nationalized goals. And if we look, you heard me talking about road safety. Just a second, if we, here we are in, Goal number three is about health. And you remember I said 3.6. Here we have 3.6. So have the number of global deaths and injuries from road traffic accidents. Well, then if you look over here, you'll see what Georgia has undertaken to attempt. And here it is to reduce, so to cut the number by 25 to 30%. And here, here are the indicators. So this is not to torture you with detail, but just to say that all these resources are available to you. You just need to go online and you can download them and the references there. So I have just one more point because as, as you know, this is a joint initiative of UNDP and the European Union, this uh, virtual weekend school. Um, so you might say, okay, why do I need to care about the sustainable development goals if we're already as Georgia, headed for the European Union. We are aligning our, our legislation, our practices, our institutions with European Union institutions. And that you already have an association agreement. Well, the point here that I wanna make is that the two agendas, European Union integration, so Georgia's effort to join the, the European Union ultimately, and its effort to achieve the sustainable development goals are very much complementary. And, one of the exercises we undertook as UNDP uh, in 2019, together with the government administration, was to say, okay, how, how well uh, aligned are the SDGs with Georgian strategies and with the association agreement? And what we find is that the association agreement alone is, includes 63% of Georgia's targets under the sustainable development goal. So if you're working towards the association agreement, you are also working towards the SDGs and vice versa. So it's very much uh, one in the same approach. The association agreement brings with it more financing, but here is a, is a table that our colleagues did in uh, Montenegro when uh, Montenegro started accession negotiations, which obviously Georgia hasn't, but when you do, you will have these chapters. So this shows where the two approaches overlap. In the middle, you see there's a lot of common ground, but then you see the sustainable development goals bring a lot of emphasis on sustainability, as I said, on the planet, on climate change, whereas the EU has more in the way of structuring the economy and the business world. So the two together are complementary, but they also bring uh, unique elements to the table. So with that, um, I, I've come to the end, but as I said, the couple of points 
you know, I want, I would like you to take away is this idea that the sustainable development goals are a very ambitious agenda, uh, but they're also meant to be quite a practical agenda. And the, the, the guiding idea is this one of leave no one behind. So the idea of equality and that it's very important to look beyond the idea of income as the, the single measure of how well a country or a family or a community is doing to look at other aspects of opportunity and choice for people, education and health being very, very important. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the last thing would be we've entered, we're in a very different world with the pandemic. Uh, so that, you know, the question, one, one important question would be, well, what do we do with the sustainable development goals in the middle of a uh, global pandemic? And here, you know, our argument is really faster, more ambition rather than cut back and, try and, uh, and contain because we see the pandemic as one of the consequences of, of people not caring about sustainability and pushing the boundaries of nature too, too far. So, um, so I hope it's not too much jargon. We do tend to live in a jargon, jargony world in the UN system, but this is, explains a lot of what UNDP does in Georgia and elsewhere, and also a lot of what we do together with the European Union. So um, we can share the presentation with you and UNDP is always available for more discussions if you're interested. And thank you very much for listening. And uh, I hope you uh, enjoy this session and also all the other uh, weekends to come.